So I actually did this post this morning when I got out of the Mumbai airport. Uh, I don't know how uh, GFF 2022 is figuring out the hashtag and showing the post somewhere. And that's also a nice idea, right? You show all the posts that is coming with GSS 2021 on a screen saying, oh, look, people, what people are talking about. Um, so has anybody, has anybody heard me before speak? That's always nice. The reason why I asked the first two questions is that you have a PhD and a professor. It's always nice to be among people who don't have a PhD. Uh, right, uh, I think uh, from, I, I came in here at around 11. I've been going around uh, attending different sessions just to see people whether there are anybody wearing kurta in the, in the room. Uh, everybody is very formally dressed, so I was like, okay, good. This is a nice place to give a talk, which is very different, right? Uh, anybody who owns an NFT? Okay, how many of you know what an NFT is? Very nice, so that's also good. Uh, so in the last session when I was sitting there, I saw some people, uh, is this the time that I'm supposed to stop? I thought it's a 40 minute session, right? It's a 40 minute session? This says only 22 now, so yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so our last session I saw a lot of people taking pictures of the slides and everything, don't do all that. By the end of the session, uh, or uh, we will do a selfie or a picture or something, I'll post it on LinkedIn, my slides will go on SlideShare. Uh, you can take it from SlideShare directly, okay? And if not, you can go to this website uh, uh, and take it yourself also. It's, I, I will post all of it online, so just put your brain here for some time. Uh, so for people, uh, uh, some, some of you said that you knew NFT. What NFT is? Quickly, fight, 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 fight. What is an NFT? What does it mean? Yeah, yeah I was not looking for just the uh, abbreviation. What does it mean? Unique manifestation of something. Just imagine, this is the first tweet that Jack uh, posted when he set up Twitter. Do you know how much he sold that for? $2.9 million, okay? And uh, I went and go, took a screenshot from Twitter saying that's the tweet that he posted. So something that you can go get a screenshot yourself, it's also worth the $2.9 $2 million, right? So that's non-fungible uh, tokens or something as he said. I, I, I say that I own it, but there is a possibility that you can also go get it also, right, somewhere else. But you are the owner because, you, for, for example, this one, uh, Elon Musk was trying to sell this uh, NFT, which is a small video, right? And he was trying to sell the a video. You could get this video on YouTube uh, and, and uh, also even store it in your phone or whatever. Right? NFT is just showing that you're the owner. I heard some uh, crypto uh, words and all in a few sessions. It will connect to all of that. Yeah, some, some words here, uh, which is to show that from 2021, the market is really big, okay? And I, I talked about this example, but here's another example. If you know about this uh, small uh, uh, paintings that somebody did, NFT artwork was sold for $69 million. Okay, next slide will have some examples uh, uh, also. So anybody has seen these kind of uh, so to say images? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, so these have become extremely popular uh, that you can buy and sell on uh, internet, right? Which is, which is what is uh, NFT business all about. Right? I'll jump back again. Uh, so when I asked you about how many of you are on Facebook, Twitter, Tinder, all that, is to, uh, just to show you a, a sample that, is there anybody in the room who's not on LinkedIn? So that's, that's the professional setting, right? All of you on LinkedIn, for some reason, I don't know what that reason is, but whatever that is, either one, you're interested in what others are doing, poking into their life, or two, you're interested in showing off what you're doing. Right? These are the fundamental reasons why social networks are actually very popular. Uh, how many of you have already posted on LinkedIn or any platform that you're attending GFF 2022? Yeah, you should do that, no? So uh, all of us contribute to this whole uh, uh, social media, uh, data that is getting created and all that. What our interest was, wh what am I trying to talk here, right? Our interest was to try and see that whether we can connect this whole NFT, there are two parts of the talk, one is the NFT, the other one is the uh, looking at just the social media for ESG itself. When I looked at the uh, conference uh, theme, it said sustainability, all that, so I thought I'll talk about how social media connects to FinTech plus the sustainability. Uh, 
Um, so, so our interest was to connect to this uh, social media growth, all of that. Anybody knows what these four V's are? Yeah, velocity, veracity, volume, all that, right? So essentially saying that, look, large amount of data is getting generated on all of these platforms. FinTech, all of you know the data that is getting generated. But my, my question has been for a few, at least about a year or year and a half, thanks to NPCI for introducing me to some of this also, uh, is that uh, are you using social media to study FinTech problems? Are you using social media for pushing content about uh, FinTech area, collecting information from social media, uh, to, make cho to make choices about fintech decisions that you're making, all that. That's been my primary interest. Uh, social media can be used for forecasting, fraud detection, uh, meaning I think government is heavily using for demystifying also, right? Uh, can be used for demystifying also. Today, if you saw some uh, uh, trending post in India where they were saying that some pictures that were uploaded on social media, it's actually fact-checked and it's actually real or fake. You can demystify, meaning I, when, I, when I started working on this, I actually went and collected a lot of data from Twitter to see who are the people who are talking about stock market, kya kya gyan de rahe. Bohot log gyan de rahe social media mein, right? And we don't know whether it is right or wrong. I think you are the people who knows whether it is right or wrong. For me, it all looks like a zeros and a ones. I can actually show that who are the people who are more influencers, who are trying to change the opinion of the people, all that. But I think it's people like you who should actually look at uh, how to use this platform to demystify some of these ideas also. I, I definitely think that delivering services is a big, big thing. Uh, again, FinTech can think about in terms of this. I will talk later uh, specifically about ESG. Anybody is, so given that only some of you knew an NFT, I don't know whether you know about platforms where you can sell NFT. There are social media platforms where you can go sell these Pictures, pictures, videos, all that. There are many platforms. One of the most popular platform is called OpenSea. This is a platform where you say that, look, I have this cat uh, uh, image. Uh, I have an image of my dog, and I want to sell it, picture of my dog. Uh, and you post it there, and there are people who are bidding for it. All the process is set up, uh, bidding, who gets to uh, buy it, all that. So, but this platform is extremely popular. The $10 billion that I said, Probably majority of the fraction of that sales is happening actually on this platform called OpenSea. Just to give you one example, uh, crypto, crypto Punks, this is a very popular uh, OpenSea account. Again, it's a verified account where they post a lot of these uh, 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 content and try selling it there. How many of you said you're on Twitter? What do you do on Twitter? Give me one or two examples that you use Twitter for. Customer support, okay, very nice. Real-time updates. Real updates, okay. Barish ho hai, pani yaan band hai, traffic hai, right? All, all that you do, right? Uh, so one thing that we thought we'll do Twitter was for to figure out whether we can actually predict the cost of an NFT if I want to sell something, right? Uh, can I actually, I'm using NFT only as an example here, but you can think of, I'm sure you're creative enough to think of other uh, uh, ways to look at how it is useful for you. Uh, but we thought that can we use this Twitter to decide, somebody wants to, Elon Musk wants to sell uh, uh, NFT on Twitter, can we predict the value of what he will be able to sell that NFT using Twitter? Is that okay? Is the problem statement clear? Yes? Use social media to figure out a value, which is why, I, which is why when I was talking to Praveena and all, I think it looks like they got excited about this part. It's, can you use social media to figure a value of something that you can sell or buy, right? How do we, I, I'll, I'll walk you through how we did it. Uh, so first we took the Twitter platform. Uh, given that some of you said you post, right? Traffic updates, live updates, customer, uh, customer service, all that. We also collected tweets uh, from uh, Twitter, uh, but which has one information which says that on Twitter they're selling, up, talking about their open seat. I create, I create, I take a picture of my dog, post it on OpenSea, come to Twitter and say that I want to sell this picture of my dog. Uh, is anybody interested in buying? That's the tweet that we are interested in. Okay? We took that tweet. We took thousands and thousands of tweets like that. And now we went to OpenSea. Given that, oh, here is an example which will show you. That's the post. That's a tweet which says sale, uh, sales end in 28 days, official album release in uh, days, and a link to OpenSea. We took this tweet, 
We know that OpenSea, OpenSea means that they're selling some NFT. We went and collected all the posts that has OpenSea uh, link like this. Now I know, can somebody give me your name? One of your name? Deep, I know Deep. Get, let's get somebody else's name. Jasmine, Jasmine. okay, good, right? Um, uh, Jasmine has a Twitter account where she's posting about this OpenSea. Jasmine also has an OpenSea account. So now I have connection between a Twitter account or OpenSea account and in the process what I have done is I've collected all her followers followings of Twitter, okay? And all her follower followings on OpenSea. All the transactions that she's made on OpenSea, all that she sold on OpenSea. All this data I collected. Why? Because all of this is publicly available in these platforms, so we actually can collect all of this information, right? So that's what, uh, uh, that's what I'm showing you here. Collect data, tweets, uh, query the OpenSea platform, uh, OpenSea features, so we can actually take the tweet and the OpenSea and look at features by which it is actually, uh, features that are available in the tweet and OpenSea. What could be a feature? One feature could be, as she said, I'll put real-time updates. I can look for a feature saying that is the, is the tweet has a location in it. She's saying that traffic in hashtag uh, Chambur, and then she's saying something. Now I have a location called Chambur there. Can I figure that out? And can I figure out the time of the post? Can I figure out the gender of the person who's posting? All that is called features, which we can use to make some decisions, okay? If it's okay, can I get a bottle of water? All right, okay. Uh, so now tweets, OpenSea, data collected, all that. Now I'll show you some pa uh, patterns in this data which will actually be super interesting uh, to decide on how we can actually find the cost of the NFT that somebody wants to uh, sell on tweet, on OpenSea from Twitter data itself. You understood what a feature is? How many of you have taken anything anything closely related to any introduction to machine learning class. Fe feature engineering features, all that, right? So simple enough. What is a feature? Let's take, if I take a picture in this classroom now and ask you, uh, find the number of heads, number of male and number of female in the picture, the features that we, you will use is a few things, right? Features is uh, how, how many of us have, kitna baal hai, kitna baal nahi hai, right? Some facial features. All that you will use for making a choice, whether it's a male or a female, that's all I'm doing on OpenSea, okay? Okay, the first graph, total tweets and NFT. So x-axis is the data time of the post, right? And y-axis is the fraction of the total items. I'll go through uh, slowly for you to understand. There are two lines, one is the NFTs, one is the tweets, okay? So the graph is, creation date versus fraction of total items that are posted. Essentially, this graph is saying that when I actually create an NFT on OpenSea, I actually go tweet about it. Go look at Elon Musk. What he will do is he will create an OpenSea item collection, and then he'll go to tweet, uh, Twitter and then say that I want to sell this. Why is this useful? This is actually useful to uh, know how much of people, or next graph also will help you to understand, whether Twitter is helping somebody to sell items. Some, when, when you said that you will use Twitter for something, I don't know how many of you have seen where all people are using Twitter to sell items. Insta is a great place for selling things now. Uh, does anybody sell things on Insta now? Right? Or how many of you have bought things on Insta? Birthday parties and all of that, now Insta is the place to buy, right? So similarly, can you use the platform to buy and sell NFT? That's the point here. Uh, so this one, x-axis is the number of followers. I'm just showing you different features to say that how Effectively, you can use this platform to make some decisions. X-axis is number of followers, which is, let's take I'm on this side, 10 followers. Uh, let's take uh, uh, Amitabh Bachchan is on 10, 10 to the power of five here, or Elon Musk maybe 10 to the power of seven, right? Number of followers that somebody has is on the X-axis. Y-axis is, what is the price that I sell? Essentially, this graph is showing that if you have more and more followers, the chances of you selling the product for higher is higher. Okay? And that's why the, the earlier graph also makes sense, right? Which is when I add it on OpenSea, I immediately go to Twitter and say that I want to sell it because thereby I can actually get more followers followed on Twitter. Okay. So this one is, so how many of you have in, in your Twitter profile, how many of you say that you're from Mumbai? How many of you say that the place of your work? 
in the profile, no? Profile. For example, if you go to my profile, it will say uh, hashtag triple IT Hyderabad, hashtag Prof Giri, hashtag alumni of so and so and all that. Anybody remembers what you have added something, location or? So the goal here is that to find out if you create an OpenSea, if you create an NFT and if you want to sell it, are you adding NFT to your profile? The, the chance of you adding NFT to a profile increases the probability of you selling the NFT for higher price. Essentially, again, the goal is that, earlier somebody said customer service, right? You can think of this as, again, if somebody is adding the information of the products that they're selling in their own profile, there are high chances that they're going to sell their product for a higher cost. Is that okay? Yes, you're okay. How many of you, how many of you have understood until here? You're okay with whatever I've said? Array, you have to raise your hand. This is a student professor class. As an ego, my manager room, my vice president room, man, I'll go up there. As an ego, it's not going to go. So if I add, if I add in my profile, hashtag NFT, there's a high chance that I'm going to actually sell NFT on my Twitter account. Talk about my NFT. I'm also the probability of my NFT being sold at higher prices higher. Yeah, that's a conclusion. No, this is the, if you look at this also, right? User creation dates and the fraction of accounts created. If you see the NFT affiliated accounts are the ones which are creating more open seas on the uh, platform, selling more on the open sea platform. If I add NFT, and we have seen this, all verified accounts also do it. They go to a open sea uh, collection addition. They come to Twitter, add uh, the tweet about it, add NFT to their uh, Twitter handle. The probability of them selling, the probability of them selling for the higher cost is higher. Okay. Uh, so essentially, the point is that uh, social media, at least my conversation with a little bit about uh, connections with NPCA, all that, I haven't heard people talk about using social media for some of these things, which is price prediction, stock market also. Stock market is another big, uh, uh, so to say, area where people are trying to use social media to say that, can I actually predict the value of the stock of ICICI tomorrow by using the tweets that are posted, right? That's also a great question, but there are other things that you can do uh, with the social media data is what my claim here is, okay? Uh, a growth of NFT, uh, you, you, meaning we, we, oh, so how many of you are on Reddit? What do you use Reddit for? Ah, yeah, yeah, subreddits, no? Okay, in subreddit, what do you do? What subreddit are you part of? I see some smiles. They don't want to say what subreddit they are part of, right? Uh, when I asked about Tinder also, the other question that I would have generally asked is, how many of you don't want to answer the question that you have a Tinder account? Right, so that's the, huh? So again, red, so one, one uh, dump and pump and dump scam was, uh, how many of you know what that kind of scam is? Right? It's basically saying that, look, do uh, uh, people talk, on Reddit, people keep talking about some stock uh, very frequently, and then they say that this is all great stock. They all show that they're all buying. Nobody's buying. Eventually, you will also follow the herd behavior and go buy it, and then they will all crash. Right? That's the bit. And people have used social media to study all this. Right? I, at least I haven't seen a lot of these kind of things in the fintech world. Uh, t people talking about how to use social media for making these choices. But Reddit is another great platform to actually study some of these things. When I said, no, there are both log yan there, stock market ke value, uh, investment ke bare mein, I'm sure there is a lot of subreddits on Reddit talking about where to invest and not to invest. I'm sure there are, there are fake ones also there. Right? So that's the paper in case uh, uh, any of you are interested in uh, this. Go play around, look around for buying or selling NFTs. That's, in, we, we'll come back to this, I think those are mine, social media handles. Okay, now to the second part of, any, any questions still here? Much time, yeah. Any questions still here? No, everything is clear. By the way, just in case, when we finish, we have a quiz. So that she just went to print a question paper and come. If you don't, if you don't get 80 or more, I'll not let you to go out of the room. You have to stay here, listen to another talk of mine. Uh, and then only you can go, okay? So, is that fair? Okay, so now you should answer my question. Yeah, any questions? Any clarifications for the first so part? The part in the graph that was not seen, what is clear to me is somebody had the tag in the user's profile. I yeah. post about it, 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that is actually in the paper. So, uh, I, mean, I mean, as I talk, we can only show you some parts, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, part is, that part is in the paper where we show that the value of the selling is higher because you're actually talking about it on social. Okay. Yeah. Any other clarifications? How many of you understood NFT now? You did not know NFT before. How many of you understood what an NFT is at least? Okay, okay, let's, let's continue. Some questions. Uh, another question that I was, uh, um, particularly I looked at the title and then I said we should talk about this, this part at least. Again, connecting to social. What is ESG? What is ESG? Wow, I thought that all of you would know. I was going to make a statement saying that, oh, all of you would know I'm just a novice here. I just started with ESG recently. But uh, no, ESG is not a common thing. Okay. Okay. So I took the Wikipedia definition here uh, just for uh, to be on the safe side. If nothing else, at least in this lecture, you would have understood what ESG and NFT is, right? Uh, ESG is environmental, social, and corporate governance. It's a framework designed to be integrated into an organization. Very, very abstract, but organization strategy to create enterprise value by expanding the organization objectives. But the idea is that sustainability-related risks and opportunities can be identified. Okay, so the keyword is these three, environmental, social, and corporate governance. Okay. And I don't know whether the conference people are thinking about sustainability from this angle. I thought that I'm looking at actually social media from a sustainability of FinTech. So I thought it will be interesting to talk about, right? Uh, so is that clear? Environmental, social, and corporate governance, uh, generally a framework so that companies do a good job about whatever you're supposed to be doing. You're talking about environmental uh, sort of betterment. You're talking about societal impact. You're talking about uh, uh, governance inside your company. That's what ESG is, OK? I'm, I'm actually really surprised that not many of you know about ESG. OK, so what the way we saw ESG, I just took this definition of ESG from here. And we said that we'll translate it from a social media point of view. What does it mean to look for ESG on social? We talked about Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So now I think you'll be able to understand what the relationship is. What is environmental, what is environmental relationship, right? Tweets that concern with corporate entity and mentions any form of positive or negative impact on the environment. I'll show you some examples later. Uh, actual tweets which are talking about environment. But for example, somebody is talking about, car, meaning let's take uh, a master or visa card is talking about how much of carbon emission uh, analysis that they did from the people's uh, transactions, they, did, they figured out that how, many, uh, how much of carbon emission is going on. Or Tesla talking about something, right? That's what the environment definition is in an ESG, okay? Social definition, tweets con uh, concerning with employees of the corporation. That is diversity, oh, that is a gender ratio in our offices, uh, X versus Y. Right? Or we, we had this employee of the month, and then this person is getting this employee of the month award. Goodness about the employees talk, talked about on social, about your own organization. The last one is governance, uh, which is tweets concerning with regulatory governance, audit, agency, shareholders. So let's take that you want to do your uh, general body meeting, and you take a picture of the general body meeting and post about it or you fire your CEO, or you, you do something like that, right? Uh, that's what the last part of governance is. Is that okay? Okay with the definition? okay -ish. Raise your hand if you have understood what ESG is. People who are not raising their hand, please get out of the room. Okay, so um, why ESG on social, right? So ESG on social is such a uh, important thing because it looks like, at least when we started looking at these ESG reports, every company is somewhat mandated also in some parts of the world, I guess, to write ESG reports and say what they are doing in ESG every year. So when we started looking at these uh, reports, it comes in some sort of say yearly fashion or once in two years, all of that. And uh, there we were asking the question that, look, if, if I have to understand Tesla's ESG stand, if it takes me next year to know that, why don't I just analyze whatever Tesla is talking about on the social? or people, others who are talking about social, about Tesla on social, and figure out what their ESG is. And please understand this ESG 
will be connected to, I, I don't know what the status in India is all that, but ESG will be at some point in time uh, connected to your organization performance, regulation, all that is also being discussed at some point in time, right? Uh, so therefore, use social, study uh, ICICI's uh, ESG portfolio from using tweets, figure out uh, what they're speaking, and push out reports about ESGs plus ICICI, right? I, I definitely see uh, uh, a space there for so to say, organizations to try out taking social media posts to talk about ESG itself. Here are three examples. I will let you figure out which is E, which is S, and v, which is G, or figure out when you tell me. The first tweet on the left top, 13 months ago, I test drove a, a Tesla for fun. I wasn't uh, even in the market, blah, blah, blah. Then, he, then it says that I appreciate it more daily, especially with the current gas prices. Left bottom, uh, these are all real tweets, right? And uh, it may take a while, but sooner or later, even the last person will understand that the most financially sound car company is, uh, in this crisis is Tesla. The last one is, if you would like to attend Tesla's 2022 shareholder meeting in person, please sign up. Which is E, which is S, and which is G? Quickly. Huh? First one is E. Okay, this one is E. I don't know which is the first one, but yeah, okay. This one is G, okay. This is S. That is G, okay. This is A. <laughs> Something, right? Okay, this is S. The right answer is this is E, this is S, and this is G. Okay? So now, now that you have figured out how to do it, right, in, in few seconds, I can get a computer to do this now. Is that fair? Yes, right? So today you can, whatever human beings can do, there's a high probability that we can build a small system to do the same thing. I don't know what the accuracy would be, but at least an attempt could be made to say that, look, we can actually figure out what an E and what a yes and what is a G is from the tweets itself. Please understand I'm using Twitter as an example, but Twitter is not the only platform. I'm using Twitter just because the data is available, everything. Whatever I'm saying, you can use it for any other social media platform. Okay? And I myself actually can do it on all platforms also. What was our goal? Our goal today is that, I don't know whether we are very successful here, but our goal today is that given this tweet, I should be able to give a, so let's take this as a program that is running. I should be able to say that this is E. I don't know how you decided that that's E. Potentially the definitions that we saw, which is environment here, it's environment talking about, oh honestly my car, uh, 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 honestly say that it's the most fun car, blah, 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 he's talking about Tesla, new model, owning a car, probably that's why you said that, see. Those are features we can derive, let's not get into that, you can go look, do yourself, understanding of machine learning and everything. But for now, simplistically, I can use some simple keywords to decide that whether it is E or S or a G. Is that okay? I'll create a, uh, I'll go through everybody who understand ESG, create a set of keywords, keep looking for each of those keywords. The more the number of keywords that appear, I will put it in each of the bucket and decide whether it's E or S or a G. Okay. And for those of you who are more technically savvy and technically interested in doing this, there are already systems that exist to do this. We only have to put the pipeline together to figure out whether, uh, how to get this ESG part done. So there is something called FinBird. I did not know all this before I started. I only learned it on the way in the last, uh, at least about a year or so. FinBird, ESG BERT, keyboard. BERT is basically a machine learning model that you can use. Give me a text uh, that as an input. BERT can tell you whether that text is written in Hindi. BERT can tell you whether it's a fake news. BERT can tell you whether, what are the keywords that are there. BERT can tell you whether it's actually about finance company or it's about a, a social network company. Right, so essentially, if you just take this bird, any input that is given, bird, output could be all that I said. There are already just a GitHub code from all these places, which you can actually try and use it uh, to say that input given text, output given whether it is a financial related text or not. So that's the example of a keywords that we're using now. So I, I, we have already built a system which actually takes these tweets uh, and then says that what is ESG. Here's a set of uh, uh, keywords that we use today, a big list, and this list also, we are not creating this list. There are actually uh, big bodies which are creating these kind of uh, keywords, and, and they are the ones who are actually doing the ESG regulation, policies, definition, all that. We just took it from somewhere, all right? Is that okay? 
keywords, tweets, it could be LinkedIn posts, it could be anything. Now we have the capability of saying that give me a social media post of people like you, I can actually say that what either your company or the organization that you're talking about, how connected, how relevant they are to ESG part. And today, the system that we have built, uh, th this one also we can add, right? We can also, one of the features could also be that not necessarily look at only the text. The feature can also be that, oh, uh, Jasmine, she was just yawning and she must have been a what, right? Jasmine posted a tweet and that tweet got 24 likes, right? Uh, and let's take somebody else from this side that did a post and that got 240 likes. Now there is a... I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you can already make a relationship of tweets with 24 likes and tweets with 240 likes, right? And now you can actually say that which of them should have higher weightage in deciding what goes into the ESG component, right? Somebody who said something which has more people are liking it, there's a high probability that that's more relevant, that's more important, right? That's what we are also doing. Minimum number of likes uh, of a tweet uh, to say that, look, pe people talk about all of these topics, and if nobody likes and nobody retweets, that's not of importance to anybody, right? So that's the idea. Okay. Um, so uh, what we end up doing now is, given the input, we can, we can actually say that classifies tweet. So FinBert uh, ESG classifies tweets as ESG. ESG Bird classifies tweets into, so there is, ESG is only at the eye level. Every, every ESG, so to say, environment can also go at a subcategory, right? Every, every category, it's okay, they'll figure out a seat. Don't worry, all of you are turning around and figuring out why, 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 what's happening, right? It's okay, I won't go right? Uh, so there is a tweet, and then I classify that tweet at E or S or a G. E can actually have a subcategory also, right? We saw what's the definition of E. I'm sure you can relate a lot more words to that E more than just the definition keywords that we showed. Is that okay? Example. example. So for example, even this itself, no? If you go to the definition of environment here, tweets that concern corporate entity and mentions about positive or negative, that's all the definition is. That's all the official definition is. But I can actually translate that into so many keywords, no? <laughs> right? So that's what the subcategory could be. So now by defining, so what does this bird do? This bird does only that. ESG bird is saying that I will take a tweet. I don't care whether it is ESG tweet or not. I'll put it into the subcategories of whatever I know that uh, of ESG is, right? The last one I already said, which is to just figure out keywords. So currently we have already built a system which is, which is at a efficiency of 84%. We are also trying to deploy this out. Uh, to see that can I actually get a ESG report of uh, Tesla? Can I get a ESG report of Google? Uh, just by using the tweets that people are either talking about Google or Google itself is talking about uh, tweets that they are posting and making an inference from there. Right? Why it is important? I'm able to get real-time, close to real-time analysis of ESG. I'm also, I also don't, meaning when a company reports whatever you're doing, there's always a bias, right? Yes? Yes, no, yeah, there is always an either intended or sometimes unintended bias. I mean, company is not wanting to say something bad, but they, they, the way that they express itself is actually biased in some sense. That's the bias. I mean, I think the power of social media is that that bias generally goes away. You can argue that there are other biases that comes in because now the public is speaking and you know you don't know whether they're expert or not. They're just ranting about something and you're using the data to make some inferences, which could be completely baseless but there are methods to actually avoid it, right? Okay, uh, so my, my takeaway for uh, at least for the last 13, 14 years is that, uh, how many of you have been part of earlier social media accounts? Uh, how many of you had Orkut account? Wow, you're all really old generation people. Uh, really old people, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so how many of you had uh, account on MySpace? There used to be a platform called, oh, there's, there are people in my space also, right? So, so I think the, the idea of social media is not going away for the two things that I said. And particularly uh, in Facebook, if you remember, there was a feature called poke. And the, and the image of it also was like this. Facebook, I mean, the, the intent of a social media is that, right? You're always probing into what others are doing, or you're doing the second one, which is called vanity. 
What I'll do now is when the session ends in another three minutes, I'll take a selfie with all of you, go do a post on LinkedIn saying I gave a master class in FinTech, blah, 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 I'll brag about it, everything. Why, why am I doing it? Because I want my friends to look at it, saying that, oh, look, or not friends, or at least somebody to look at it, saying, oh, nice, the professor is having fun, right? That's the whole idea of social, right? Uh, how many of you are on Insta? How many of you checked your Insta from morning until now at least once? Okay, how many of you checked any social media platform from morning at least once? No, no, WhatsApp, no. WhatsApp is not a social network. Okay, how many of you did not check any social network? If not WhatsApp, how do you live your life? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, uh, there's no network here. Sorry, I also was trying to check my LinkedIn uh, thing that I did in the morning, but I also did not have network here, yeah? So social media doesn't, it's not going to go away because of the fundamental reason of human behavior. This was always there, by the way. Always there, knowing what others are doing in the life. Bagalwali ghar pe konsa gaadi liya tha, konsa sari gari da tha, kahan se sari gari da tha, kitna mehenga tha. Ye sab has been our part of our life. It's just that these platforms have just made it so, so faster to get, today you can just do a call with somebody. For example, I do lectures sitting in my office, Facebook Live, to like thousand students with just click of a button. And thousand people get my content, right? Which is not the case in the past, that's all, right? Uh, so one request for people, uh, I made this request before also, but uh, here is one, uh, another attempt for making a request, which is how many of you have interacted with an academic person before, not your own professors, in your, uh, in your professional life, how many of you have interacted with an academic person? In what context? Can I know? Pitch a solution, okay. Anything else? Mentoring, advisory, okay, very nice. That looks like very nice, right? Please do it because I think this proportion itself is very small, right? Uh, I, I, I always think that uh, uh, academic interactions with thanks to Praveena for this. I think it was Praveena's idea to actually uh, get me here. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to see actually these kind of events from an academic, I told her that this is massive. 5,000 people or 3,000 people showing up here and doing these all formally dressed, right? Uh, have professors on committees, uh, I, I pick on that uh, professionally dressed because I, this is my best I can get. No, I this is, huh? I don't know whether you know that there's a person who today. Yeah, 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 I saw him. Yeah, yeah. So, and he was a very young guy also. He was a very young guy. All right? So have professors on your committees, boards, if possible. They're not that expensive, right? So we, you, should, you should definitely consider. Uh, I, 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 I like this quote. I recently finished reading this book called Alchemist. How many of you read this book? How many of you know about this book? How many of you read it? Oh, super nice. So I read this book recently, uh, and then there was this one line which said that, learn to recognize omens and follow them. I know what you're taking it away from that. I will let you do creativity to decide what an omen is for you. Uh, but uh, but I, I think that there's fantastic ways to connect at least social for financial industry. That's extremely clear to me. But I don't know whether that is being pursued that way. Today, when I walked around in that uh, pavilion of this floor or the earlier one floor uh, below, uh, I did not see any, I mean, I saw a lot of these payment-based app solutions. But I, that's there. But I think there are other avenues also that I would, I would really request you to uh, look at it. But I'll go back to this slide. This slide is the reason why I came uh, to give this talk to get some LinkedIn requests, to get some followers, uh, right? That's my social media handles. If you're interested in any uh, ways to connect with me, feel free to connect. I will take the selfie that I promised, and then I'll stop. It's 40 minutes, so I'm done. Thank you. Can we do a selfie? Yeah, OK, so let's try. OK, so that's good that everybody's here. I'll send it to Praveena saying that that's my class. Uh, okay, any questions quickly? Yes, any questions? Please go ahead. It's your opportunity now. Opportunity for what? I don't know, but opportunity that you is, here, uh, here, sir. They can ask ask yeah, any questions they to, like. Yeah, feel free to. Huh? Yeah, you can find him on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Find, He's everywhere. Just search for P O N N U R A N G A M. P O N G U R. It's a verified account. How can Twitter not show that? I will. I will report that. So otherwise, search just for my name, PO, this one. Search for this name. I'm the only Facebook user with that name. There's no other Facebook user with the name called Ponurangam Kumaraguru. Uh, it's impossible. 
Just search for, no, it's, if you search even for PK, it will come actually. Yeah, see, somebody got it. Naam don't li jena. Okay, you can search that later on, but please ask questions if you have any. Yeah, anybody? Pravina, I took your name once or twice in between, so you can look at the, you can look at the reading, uh, recording where all I took you. No? Yeah. Uh, give the mic. Ah, one to two gram keywords is that, yeah, yeah. So if you go to here, right? Let's go to keywords. So what does, what does a one gram keyword means? Let's do it here, yeah. yeah. Right? So one gram keyword means I'm using only, let's take integrity. Business integrity together makes it two gram. It's essentially one word versus two word, right? You can build a system which is n gram, which is called, this is n gram. But it just, it's, it just also gets into a lot of uh, noise in the data because if you add, let's take business integrity, transparency, hazardous substances, there's also a lot more uh, junk that can come on the data. So today we are restricting ourselves to two gram, that's all. So that's a three gram. Okay. That's a three gram. So one, what is one gram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this one is one gram. Okay. Yeah, great, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, on uh, on social media in general, or wh what context? ESG only this. ESG, I think ESG itself is such a small space. No, currently, any external? Yeah, we're talking to some companies also. We're talking to some companies also because I think these are these are interesting directions to use social to collect data and make some inferences, which at least we have not seen it. So we thought we'll actually attempt it. Yeah, you had a question, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. I, let's do. Uh, let's do a quick. How much more time do I have? Accordingly, I'll paste something. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, uh, quick. Uh, sort of same machine learning or information retrieval, right? So, one approach is that I create a dictionary. A, B, C, D words. All of these words are in the dictionary. When I make a, when I when I get a tweet, I use the this dictionary to make a choice, to make a choice of what the words are. That's a, that's a, not a best approach, right? Because keywords does not get you always the necessary things. You may be talking about ESG, but not using any of the keywords that are relevant. That's possible. And a word, and a word called, let's say preparedness, can give you something which is not ESG also. So if you think about it, the, the technical terms for this are called as precision and recall. If you're interested, go look up what these words are. I mean, the way to look up it is how good the, if you do a Google search, the results that the Google is giving, the recall will be better, recall will be higher if they're able to get all the documents that are relevant, right? Precision will be higher if in the top 10, exactly what you want they are giving you. That's the difference between a recall and a precision. Precision is what you want is what is shown to you, right? So given the problem that I said in terms of dictionary, that's there. So, Actual approaches that people would use is that I'll take a tweet, I'll do something called as POS tagging, okay? Which is to say that every, so let's take a tweet which has what is noun, what is verb, what is adjective, blah, blah, blah. Now I know the linguistic properties of the tweets, then I will make a choice of which one to use and which not to use in conjunction with the dictionary. So today's NLP, so I think uh, we talked about earlier also, right? When, uh, uh, today a lot of projects in India are attempting this, you speak in Hindi to somebody who does not know Hindi, your Hindi is getting, or let's take Malayalam. You speak in Malayalam, Malayalam is getting translated into English, English is then translated into Tamil, and Tamil is spoken to them. If two people who, I know Malayalam and the other person knows Tamil, this is done. This is not done by keyword, right? It, it is impossible to create this text that I'm speaking just using keyword. What, what those solutions do is this kind of minimalist PO tagging. Of course, there are more machine learning involved in it, but that's how it is done. It takes the semantic meaning of it and then tries attempting it, not just the sort of the syntactic meaning, which is mo mostly the dictionary words. Yeah, okay, anything else? 
we have more time, we can take some more questions. Please go ahead. Yeah. Mic too. So like yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know, there are there are companies that already do sentiment analysis. Yeah. Uh, both from the company side to to see what the public is talking about us, and also from investment, just to see okay, if you are investing in this stock, what's the latest uh, buzzword like? Yeah, yeah. So and uh, also, I mean, there are co there are uh, companies that do research on politically sensitive people if there is an important decision to be made. Yeah. Like credit decisions. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, what do you think is the possible usage of uh, this social media analysis. Uh, because I thought, okay, it is being put to its proper use and again for pump and dump, those are all social engineering stuff. Yeah, yeah. Social media is, a, is the best vehicle for it. Yeah, yeah. Do you see any other avenue? I mean, I mean uh, so are you approaching this no, from another angle? You are only looking at only the um, sort of say pull, right? You are saying that look, tweet, tweet exists, you want to do some analysis of sentiment and figure it out. No, uh, okay. I mean, I'm not talking about people who want to shape public sentiment by posting tweets or using yeah. influence. And, uh, I, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm okay. taking that out. Okay. That's a different thing not related to how companies use yeah, yeah. Use, uh, use APIs to query from this uh, social okay. media stuff. Okay. So the question is, is there anything more is can be done more? Yeah. other than sentiment? Is that the question? Yes. Oh, come on. I, I think the push part is the word that I think is more important which is shaping the opinion. Today, if you see, today, if you see, right, there is, there is, the idea of press conference has gone away, no? Yeah. Government and organizations don't say that, oh, let's do a press conference, get press people, let's say that this happens. The CEO or the CTO or somebody, secretary posts, and done, no, news media people, Anand Mahindra is a great example from Mumbai, no? He does a tweet in Times of India tomorrow and writes about it. Where is this coming from? That's just coming from simply the Twitter, right? So I think the sentiment is, again, sentiment is only one angle to the whole content that is available on social, but you could use it for ESG also. At least I never knew that cost of a stock market can be predicted by using tweets, right? Right. And then, oh, by the way, elections can be predicted using tweets, right? Yes. So which means your, your, your next government it can is, be it can be used. one is influenced through Twitter. The other is I can also get to know who has the greater chance by looking at tweets also. Right? Okay, cool. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so you you said huh. you yeah you mentioned uh, faculties can come on board of companies. Yeah. Uh, do need to be, do they need to be certified uh, to come uh, to become a board of directors or on or independent directors? So, huh? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm actually, I'm actually pursuing, if you can stop recording, that'll be better, but that's okay too. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, recording Mangal Lijay. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I don't think so that's a problem. So, uh, currently I'm actually pursuing some companies to be on the board. I don't know what certification level you're talking about. They have told me that there is this content that I have to digest. And I have to take an exam, which is an online exam for some 20 minutes, 30 minutes, MCQ questions, I have to pass. That I will do, no? What's the problem? Yaar, itna to kar lunga. Uh, company mein board, 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 board member aane ke liye, utna test to kari lunga. Right? So, yeah. So, we, we train board of directors uh, for certified board of directors. Ah, so you're basically selling your uh, I, uh, company here. I thought that you were curious to know how I can become a board member. Uh, very nice uh, strategy, by the way. Good question also. I yeah. Yo, please. Yeah. So like there is this uh, news regarding Elon Musk saying that most of the Twitter accounts, many of them are fake, like they are bought accounts. Yeah, so yeah. like, uh, do you use this uh, ML to identify which of them are uh, specifically or possibly they could be bots, like yeah, which, yeah, yeah. which are pushing a particular agenda or a sentiment. Yeah. Like yeah, because it is, uh, they are driving the consumer sentiments, most of the bots and all. So you need to filter them out or you will get a biased output. Absolutely, absolutely there is, this, that, that statement of large proportion of them are bots is, is true. We have methods to figure out that how, whether it's a bot or not. No, you have to collect data. There's no way that if I, this is Twitter, I take all this data from Twitter, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very certain that entire content is not going to be very useful for all choices. I have to actually remove some parts, let's take, which is bots or fraud or whatever you want to call it. So just simple techniques you can, I mean, people have tried many techniques. The short answer is yes, machine learning can be used to figure out whether a given account is a bot, whether a 
given tweet, whether it is posted by a bot, whether a tweet which is a, a tweet that is posted, whether it is fake or real, all of that has been attempted. But the biggest problem in all that is, in social problem is, something that will come up new. Bangalore mein floods hua. Kisi ka ghar mein, let's take, saamb a gai. Usko tweet kisi ne gara. O saamb aai nahi aai, kaise verify kaise karo. Machine learning to nahi kar sakta hai. Machine learning cannot do that, right? So, that's where the limitations of all these technologies become. But there have been already existing technologies, platforms which are built, extremely useful platforms through API. You can send a request to uh, the system saying that this is a tweet ID. It will return whether it is fake or real. Yep. Thank okay. You. Okay. If nothing else, thanks again. Hopefully you got something and look forward to connecting with you on some social platform.